viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel that's our 2014 Chevrolet. it's a 1500 it's the 5.3 and it's got an ac issue it's got no ac so that's the issue uh the fella stopped in usually frequents the other shop in that direction he told me and uh he stopped in here to see if i'd put a little bit of the free on in the ac and I just, you know, question him as to, you know, what's up. And then he says that the other shop usually fills it up four or five times throughout the summer so he can make it through the summer. So I suggested, how about we fix the truck instead of polluting the environment. And he says that it can't be fixed because they can't find a leak. So these Chevrolets are pretty common to leak out of the AC condensers. As a matter of fact, most of them you could get covered under warranty. Chevrolet didn't cover this one under warranty apparently and that's where his leak is so I showed him the most common spot for these leak in the driver's side corner of the uh, AC condenser and pretty easy to find usually they leak pretty good uh, like this one does a charge only lasts them you know a couple days and then he's got to go up and get it filled up again so anyhow let's uh that's a long ways to say we got to put a condenser in Erico but let's pull this thing apart and put the condenser slash training cooler in it because I am wise, we're going to take a peek at the new one before we pull out the old one. Uh, just to make sure it's not complete something else in the box here. Nothing more frustrating than that, folks. Get it all out, check your new parts only to find out they're bad or something happened. I ordered this one right from Chevrolet. Let's see. It's made in uh, Tijuana, or Taiwan as some people say it. So there's that. She's genuine AC alcohol. Pull that baby open. Let's have a little look in here. Should be a box in the box. Ooh, look at this. Fancy. Take that. Set that on the floor over there. Get out of the knife. Looks pretty good. Those guys in Taiwan, they know how to pack stuff, let me tell you. Now that we have it unboxed and leaning up against the wall where it's completely vulnerable, we'll work on removing some of the plastic bits here. Son of a hoo hoo. Where'd that go? On the floor, I just heard it. Hallelujah. So we're going to work on getting these out. They've only got one little slot on the side there. We can get underneath them. So just kind of hold them up there. Get under it with that give it a tug and then repeat the process get it worked up a little work it up pull it out and then just keep on going oh look at that even not only did it fall on the floor it fell all the way out the front where we could actually get it Ding dong's already been in here. Let that sucker loose. The good news is we need to take that out anyways. So we'll unhook the mass airflow sensor. Typically you would unhook the clamp. Then we're gonna get this a little pull. Take that right out of the way. Well, this is nonsense. Okay, hold on, folks. Cover your eyes. Nobody wants to look, okay? 
So they just pop right out there, no problem. So why'd we have to remove that extra battery tray over there? I don't know, but I saw it in service data. So we did it. So now we gotta remove the auxiliary transmission cooler line here. It's classic Eclipse. That which is classic for gonna be stuck on there like a mother lover. So we got our Eclip removal tool. Click them in, turn them to get the Eclip to pop, hold them in, and then wiggle. And then say say naughty words while you're doing it. And then usually they'll come out. Come on, man. Or not. So let's try the upper one. I'll, uh, if I do it right, you won't be able to see it. Which is fine, because it's kind of up here in the corner. And it looks just like the one down there. But let me just see if we can get either one of these to unhook. Now this upper one, we could probably just take it out with a pick because it comes with new ones. Which we may do, because it's a lot easier if you just use a pick on these things instead of the appropriate tool, to be honest with you. Stand by. All right, folks, this thing's starting to piss me off. It's gonna be Erico uncut and raw here in a minute. Come on, you frig hole. Yeah, she's on her way out. We're past the clip, my guy. She's coming. I don't want to spray that. We're just making a mess. There. There. Your mother lover. And then we got to unhook it from the rad. So we've got that wiggly. We'll give this a little juice. Apparently that's the trick. This is the E-clip tool. Uh, nothing super fancy, but they're super helpful. Most of the time, if I'm not making a video, these things pop right out like a boss. Usually so much so that you send the tool flying, but not today, she ain't having it. It's like the cleanest one ever. And I'm gonna bust out a pick because we're done asking. Typically, I will not use a pick on these because it, it does spread out the clips, or it can. And, not to mention, whenever you take them off like this, you send that thing flinging across the shop. We'll set that down. I don't believe that we need it because the new uh, cooler should come with these fittings on it. But there, that's all I wanted to do. Try our luck on this side. So this is over on the driver's side. <clears throat> Remove the black little cover there. You know what, we're not even going to try our luck on this side, but I did look, the cooler does come with these, so screw it. I don't know, let's try our luck. Let me just show you. So typically, you take the tool, clamp it around the line, you bring it in, and then you'll turn it, you'll feel it click, and it picks up all three of the fingers on that E-clip. These are a jiffy type connector, they're called, made right in New York. Okay, I think she already started to come out because we had it clicked open and then we wiggled it a little bit. And then we wiggled a little more and boom, out she comes. So that in the real world is how that's supposed to work. But uh, sometimes they're piss pot. Especially if they're, if they're bound. You know, if you can't wiggle the line straight, they do have a tendency to kind of get stuck in there. So I'll try this one again. We gotta get this short line off here. We'll see if it wants to cooperate, and it does. So, like I say, typically this tool works quite well because I know most people are in the comments like, oh, I always use a pick, you know, blah, 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 whatever. But, uh, yeah, I typically use the tool because it typically works. I want to start peeling this upper tie bar out of there. Uh, there's six bolts that hold this thing on. Three on each side. Let's see if we can't reach them here. I don't know if this little ratchet will get up in here or not. 
bolts come through from the bottom, super handy. Um, I don't believe we're gonna be able to get them with this little fella, maybe. Might have to do a little tweaking here and the There's one. I don't wanna drop it. Finish it off here. It should take a 10 mil. And they're gonna be these little guys. It'll be like the same bolts that held the uh, washer jug in just a little bit longer. Then there's another one up under here. Like I say, there's six total, so there's three on the other side that we're going to have to get also. And then this one's a little snug over in this corner. Are we on it? No. No. There. We'll start working this loose. Another bolt here in the middle. That takes a 13 mil. So I'm going to take that one out and the other three over there. Da, 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 da. You shitty. Some more uh, plastic clips here. Get them little guys out. Now they're different than the other ones you pulled out. See if we can get right under that one, maybe. Come on, baby. There she goes. Excellent tool by SK, by the way. One of my faves. And then we'll pull this little plastic thing down. Boom. That should get us right up in this joint where we need to be. If we get up in there with our tool. We just kind of got to give it the feel. Got to do it by feel. Let's see. There's one. Going in blind, baby. Nope. Not as good as I thought it was. Where are you at, little fella? Well, you think this guy would have had three tips and know what he's doing here, but apparently not. Nope. Nope. There. First try. Now, before you go, just yank. We gotta make sure there's no wires attached to it. There may be. There may be. Let's push back on the washer plug neck here just a little. Don't look, don't look. Okay, off she comes. Boom, piece of cake. Oops, oops. Pull off some, this plastic shield here. Oh boy! She plopped. Big time. That must be banging through the fields with this old chivy. Now we're going to have to do a move. I don't know if many of you guys have know this move or seen it. It's a classic reach down. We need to get down to this bolt right here. And it holds the two AC lines on that little plastic clip. Instead of the reach around, we're going to reach down. So that's where we're going deep, like this. I can't do it one-handed, though. Maybe I can. Come on, baby. Ah, dang it. Almost. Almost, fella. There. Now I got it. So then we'll just take in the... Whiz that out all zippy zap like. I really need a camera guy. Somebody to hold the camera while I do stuff. Because you guys can't see crap. Just drop that bolt. You'll get it once everything's out. And then we need to unhook those two AC lines there. Wish that was a little more convenient, but it's not. So right there between those two hoses, that 13 millimeter nut. Uh, I'm going to take that off, but however, be ye warned, uh, make sure you discharge the AC and not into the environment into an improved recycling machine and unhook those and then I think she's ready to come on out. Once you have those lines off, you have these little dongers right here. See that little plastic clip right here on the red? You got to push that in and that's going to allow you to pull the tab up out of the slot. Now there should be one on both sides. And there is. You got the tab. You push in the tab, lift the condenser out of the slot. And on the bottom it should just be one of these. It's a little saddle, no no locky do dad. Let's have a look so if I can show you. 
Yes, sir. She just sits in the little clip down there. All right, pretty common GM practice. But wow, this guy's going to be extra cool when we're done because we'll blow all that stuff out, or at least blow it in deeper into the core, one or the other. But let's get this out of here. There she is, baby. Let me show you where these things leak. So if you got a leaker on yours, on your Chevy, they leak right here. So right where that uh, tube goes in, I think it's the dryer, where the desiccant pack is over here, that's where the little suckers leak all the time, every time, guaranteed. Uh, and they leak so bad, usually this, the old soapy water routine will uh, show those. All right, it's peeing all over the floor, I gotta move. My guy Josh just brought me this, says the guy needs rear brakes. Let's go see what in the thunder he's talking about. Seriously, you drove it in like this? Mm-hmm. And you know what? The pedal didn't really feel that bad. Then honestly. why then why are you trying to rip the guy off, Josh? Yeah. I mean get a little bit more time out of it probably. I'll see if Napa can turn them. What's the other side look like? Oh my gosh, he's still got a, quite a bit over here. <laughs> I love it. Just peeing out some training fluid still. We need to get the uh, plastic here off the ends and transfer that to the new one. And these just pull off like that and then just stick them on the new one. The training fluid in this thing is about as black as tar. <laughs> we know what's next, folks. It's typically red, not in this case. I think that stud it came with. I'm gonna twirl in there. And then we'll tighten that up a little bit. Probably takes like a 5.5 millimeter or something like that. And that's pretty much it. Reverse uh, everything you just did. Of course, clean all the junk out of the front of the radiator there. It's about the only time you can get to that. Pretty snug otherwise. You know, as far as normal maintenance type cleaning, so to speak. Start to get this kind of shimmied over where it belongs. And then you'll line it up in the, remember this thing? You're gonna line it up in that. Make sure your plastic stays pushed in. And uh, these plastic shrouds here on the front that we put on, they also clip into one of these things down there. So you'll have to kind of double whammy, two holes at one time here, get her lined up. I'll show you. I'll show you when I'm done. Baby. Right, everybody looks happy now. Great. So there's that. And like I say, you'll see where the little plastic shroud here on the front clips into the little donger down there at the bottom too. And then the little finger pops out here on the top. Oh, son of a monkey. And then it lets you know that you're in all the way. And now we just need to start putting her back together. And this right here, folks, this is where Jiffy-type connectors really shine. 
on the assembly portion because you can just you push, 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 and they click in. This one's kind of silly because this thing's hard piped with no flexi joint. But make sure they click in good and then obviously put the plastic retainer back on them. And that's it. So like I say, they're great, you know, the concept and everything. Sometimes they suck though. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see here. Ah. Well, I guess we'll click it on the radiator first. That's all locked back on because that's important because it's going to uh, seal up against the front part here, like so, when that all sticks together. It's amazing how much crud is not plugged in the front of the condenser but got blown through. And that's probably because it hits the condenser, it gets reduced into a fine matter. This is my theory. Then the water from the rain and the pressure washer from the hose if you wash your truck it breaks down enough to get through in which case it's made out of a gummy paste and then it sticks to the radiator that's my theory all right we got to give it the classic reach down and uh, tighten that bolt back up down there screwdriver anyways. At this point, folks, we need to make sure we've hooked up the AC lines. You don't want to forget that. Make sure they're clean and dry. You've got a couple new gaskets on it, the bolt in the middle where we put that stud on. Do that, throw the system under a vacuum, and uh, hold that for about 10 minutes. We're gonna let it run through its silly little leak check, even though that doesn't prove anything. It just proves you didn't have a huge line off, uh, but we'll let that go and do that, and then we're gonna throw a little bit of oil in there. And by that, I mean about an ounce. 
I'm a little nervous because this thing's been charged so many times at the other shop. Hopefully they're not just pounding the oil to it. He did say that they put dye in it multiple times. So we're gonna kind of be a little cautious on the uh, oil. We don't wanna swamp out the system. After that, we're gonna charge it. We're gonna fill her up on the low side. We're gonna uh, put the recommended amount in there from General Motors, and then we're gonna run the system on full beans and research. I wanna see about a 30 degree difference from inside to outside uh, at the center vent on full beans. And we've achieved that. Uh, we're gonna check it over for leaks. We're gonna hop inside there. Zippy Zap, P R N D L or M in the case of the Chevrolet, and then back up through into P. Come out, yank the stick on the trainee, make sure it's full. Uh, the fluid in this thing was darker in a pocket. So we're gonna recommend to him that he should get that replaced either now or when they put the trainee in it. You choose, it's a Chevrolet. And then obviously we're gonna fill up the cooling system because we've seen that's down about three quarters of one US gallon. And I did see that it's leaking down both sides of the plastic tubs on the radiator. So we're giving him a quote on a radiator training fluid and filter change if he wants to do that and then let the customer decide but i need you to decide whether or not it's time for you to head in that comment section the questions the comments you put them down there the insta the facebook and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching